Heidi ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we got a 2009 Nissan Altima and we're getting ready to put a radiator in this thing. Uh, this belongs to Mint Hill Tina. She was uh, driving to work the other day. No, she has some coolant leaking out of this thing. So we diagnosed it the other day. We did find that the bottom tank is cracked and leaking. So stay tuned, we'll show you how we get this done. Okay, folks, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little 3 h cordless here uh, with a 10 millimeter. We got a couple bolts right here we're gonna take out. This will take this air tube out of the way. So let's go ahead and get this done. Okay, we'll just lay that out of the way. Okay, folks, first thing we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this upper radiator hose off. We're replacing that as well. Went ahead and got a new upper hose new lower hose <coughs> to go with it. Now this little piece here, we're not replacing because we actually replaced that about a year or so ago. So that's actually brand new. All right, we'll go ahead and take our pliers here. We'll move these cl uh, spring clamps here back, pull that hose off. Okay, like so. And guys, I forgot to mention, I do have a big old 55 gallon drum spill container underneath this vehicle. I've had that tool, I call it a tool, because it is a tool. I use it for jobs like this, radiators, water pumps. I've had this, that thing for probably 25 years. And uh, I think it was in a storage bin or something when I moved into it, someone had left it there. So I just, I decided that it would be a good spill container for antifreeze. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these uh, little plastic clips out here. I think you can access this radiator by pulling this grill assembly out. Not 100% sure yet. I've probably done one of these in the past, but it's just been so long I can't remember. So let me see if I can get all this off of here and, and then we will, we'll go from there. Okay, it looks like the grill is going to have to come out here. Uh, I had to use a little pry tool to pry right here on this side and right over here up high too. Now it looks like I can reach in here with my hand. can't really see this, but there's some tabs down here at the bottom. And what I want to do is I'm pushing down on it and pulling out. And I'm going to work my way across here. I think there's three or four of them across here. I think pushing down, there we go. Now we got that one too. I'll show you what they look like when we get this apart. There's another one right here. Okay, and one more right over here. Okay, so here's what they look like guys. There are these little tabs right here, okay? One, one, two, three, and four. They go right into the front of the bumper here like so. And what I'm doing is pushing down with my thumb as I'm pulling out. And that's how we release the grill. Okay, I'm gonna lay this aside. We're gonna continue on. Okay, folks, very interesting little clip here to that holds the top of the uh, radiator. Uh, I'm taking two screwdrivers. I'm prying back on a little release tab, like right there. And then I'm prying with my screwdriver. Okay, so we're removing this off of here. Do this with, be very gentle so you don't break this, because remember this car is over 10 years old, this piece here could break very easily. So we got one on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the one off over here. And you can just film me doing it. Shouldn't take me just a second. Prying off here. Prying. Let's see if I can get this side to move a little bit. Okay, now I'll keep that like so. I actually should be able to work it now. So there we go, we're gonna move this little tab. We got it off without breaking it. We'll lay it right here. And that freed up the radiator upper mount at the top, okay? So now we're gonna continue on. Okay, I'm gonna pull these two little push pins out right here and pull this little air duct off just to get it out of the way right quick. And pretty easy here to do, I say that as I'm having trouble with this little clip. So there we go. And we'll just pull this little duck right out of the way. Okay, folks, uh, 
I'm actually pulling the condenser away from the, um, the radiator. It just slides into some little hooks here. You can push the little tab in and then I had to reach down here and I actually yanked up on this. I've already got this side released. Let's see if I can do the same thing over here. We got some lines actually attached here. I'm hoping I can do this without discharging the AC. And I just wanna see if I can. And I think we got it up past it right there. Let's see if we can get it all the way out. I don't know if that's gonna be possible. Uh, yes, it might be. We, yep, I think we can. I believe we, hopefully, now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna disconnect this uh, receiver dryer. There's a, a high pressure switch or low pressure switch. Uh, I guess it would be a high pressure switch on the receiver. Um, disconnect that. And see if I can maneuver this just to stay out of the way long enough to get the radiator out. I hope I can, that will actually make life a lot easier. Let's see if we can get this plastic piece to come out. If we can get this piece to come out, it's just an air dam. The farther we can get this piece to come, the farther we can get the condenser to come this way, I do believe. And we don't wanna bend nothing. But that right there, Maybe enough, I'm not sure. I may end up having to remove the condenser. We'll find out here in just a few minutes. Okay, we're gonna go and pull this neck off and pull this upper part of this hose away from the uh, radiator if we can. Let's see if that helps it free up a little bit to where we can uh, get that thing out of here. So let's see what we gotta do to get to this hose here. Or I may just take it loose right here and slide it all the way through. Let me take a look here. Let's see what I'm able to do. Well, that's gonna be difficult getting to that clamp right there, but we can do it. And this clamp here will be a lot easier to get to. So we may just pull this one off and see if we can work the whole radiator out. Okay, folks, we are gonna have to take the condenser out. So we just evac the system and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect now that there's no refrigerant in it. Go ahead and take the condenser um, loose here. Here's the bolt that holds the lines in place. Let's see if we can release these right quick. And uh, then we should be able to pull the condenser out. I'm just trying to be real gentle with this where we don't mess up anything. Okay, now with the line disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and pull the condenser totally out of the way. And this should make life a lot easier now. Okay. Now, let's see, pull the rag out. Now let's see how far this thing will come back now. We're gonna see if we can get to the lines. Cause we got some transmission lines on this side that we gotta take loose. We got this one little hose here. We gotta either see if it'll work through here or we can take it off and we still got a lower hose to contend with as well. All right guys, I'm gonna take a pair of needle nose. I'm gonna try to take this upper transmission line loose here first. I'm gonna slide it down a little bit. And let me go grab my clamp tool. Okay guys, this here's a cool little tool. Uh, actually, it's a snap-on. Bought this years ago when I was actually working at Infinity, which is a high dollar Nissan because, and therefore, all these little hoses that Nissan's like to put on everything. And they work great for uh, grabbing a hold of the line and twisting it, breaking it loose and working it off. So a great little tool to have. Okay, this line is still in my way, uh, but I can go right on this side and take a 10 millimeter out and I can break the line loose right over here. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do here in just a second. I'm actually gonna separate this line and this is just, and this here will be just a little short line that'll come out. If it'll come loose. Now remember this thing's been together a long time. 
Okay, so we are, we got that little clamp off now, so we should be able to pull it right on out. Got one little line here being stubborn. There we go. So now see this little piece here comes right out. So we're gonna lay it out of the way. So now we got a lot more movement with our um, radiator now. So we might be able to actually fish this whole thing out of here. If not, we'll put, take this other clamp off as well, which actually I think we did get it out just now. Okay. Now we may actually, I don't know if I'm gonna put that on the new one yet or not. But, okay, so we're disconnected down here. We can pull up at the bottom when we're ready to. Let's go here on this side. As you look, we got a, a transmission line and a um, radiator hose to disconnect. Okay, folks, with the lower radiator hose, I ended up uh, prying that off. It was a little bit of a pain in the butt, so I got a little aggressive with it. Doesn't matter because we're replacing the radiator anyway. So we're gonna pull this out of here. And as you can see, that's where that, where the uh, lower radiator hose was. These are your two lines here on this side. This is the hose on this side we were talking about. And I may or may not put this one back on before I shove it back in. We'll see in just a little bit. So we'll lay this aside and we're gonna go get our new part. Okay, folks, we have the new radiator here. Um, I, we did not purchase this hose here but it seems to be in pretty decent shape right now we may go in and replace it later uh, it'll be a little bit more difficult but it can be done without taking the radiator out so we're going to go ahead and um, put this back in place um, part stores are closing now it's on sunday so otherwise we'd ride up there and grab one but we're going to go ahead and get this back together we're going to feed this back down in here we're going to get our new hose Put in place get it clamped on first do the reverse procedure of what we just did so let's go ahead and do that and let me go get the new hose and get it get it fed down there in place okay here's the lower hose here guys i'm gonna go ahead and feed it through here where it sticks out down there we're, we're gonna put new clamps on it and we're gonna hook it up right here on this um, fitting that goes into the block so let me go ahead and feed this down here and we're gonna go ahead and get this connected up okay so stay tuned okay folks if you look right down in here uh lower radiator hose is installed and clamped down uh we got it clamped over here in place as well so it's good to go now we're gonna work on getting these transmission lines hooked up we'll work on that now and then we'll feed this back inside here and get the radiator back in place Okay guys, radiator is in place, okay? And I will have to admit, it was a little bit of a struggle uh, getting on the top line of the uh, transmission back on was a little bit of a struggle getting the, the tits off of the end of the radiator here. And I'm talking about these right here, actually I'm talking about the ones on this end, getting them to go back into the rubber grommet was a little bit of a pain in the butt um you had to put it in on this side and then feed this hose through here so it was, it was quite a little challenge here okay um guys if uh, i don't know what your skill level is but you know this this one is a little tough you know this may be one you may want to take and have someone else do for you depending on what your skill level is but uh so we're going to go ahead now and uh put the top of the radiator stuff back together i'm going to slide the condenser in and bolt all this stuff in and get some coolant going. These are both the same here. So guys, what we've done, we put the little rubber grommet back up here. Uh, put the little plastic retainer here. I'm gonna snap it right in place, click, click, just like that. Do the same thing over here. We put the rubber piece back in, click it on, click, click, just like that. So the radiator is secure now. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get that condenser in. So guys, before I put the condenser in, I wanna make sure I fed this line up through here. And actually it's real simple. I just went from this side in, fed the line right through the opening here. And we're gonna go ahead and hook up this side first, since this was the last side that we disconnected. I don't know if the thing can get the camera around here or not. It's pretty simple. It's just two lines. You stick the little one in first, the high side, and then there's a clamp 
from the low side line that actually holds it in place. I don't think you're actually looking at it, Nathaniel. You can get a little further. You move a little bit further this way. Right here. Film right there. There's the clamp. It holds this line and then it feeds in here. We're gonna put a bolt right in the middle. So we'll go ahead and knock that out right quick. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the condenser in now. We got that line tightened up on the uh, right, other side of the radiator side of it. So we're sli sliding these tabs into these hooks here. You see these tabs that are sticking out here, guys? Well, there's little, little hooks in the radiator. There's four of them, two down low, two up top. So we get the bottom one started first, and then we slide the top ones in all at the same time. Make sure you get them all where they'll slide in. And the ones up top will actually snap to hold it in place. Something he's not doing right. Oh, I know why. It's because this hose. This is not right. Let's get this out of the way for a second. To where we can get it hooked up here in just a second. Oh boy. I'm so glad I have retired from working on cars sometimes. That's right, friends. 34 years in the business, and now I'm a stump grinder and lawn maintenance man. And I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. And it's days like this that make me love it even more. <laughs> okay. All right, so anyway, we got the tab down low started. I can see that. Get this plastic out of the way for a second. We'll get that back in in a minute. That one started. We are started over here up high and down low. So now we can simply snap it down like so. And I think we've already went far enough. Okay, I believe we are seated right there. And that's where we're at. Okay, so our condenser is in place. We can go ahead and plug in this connector right here. Ba-bam. And now we gotta put this line back in place. Make sure it seats correctly. And when it does, we'll put the bolt in and we will tighten that down. Okay guys, uh, condensers in place, um, lines are hooked back up and tightened down on this side. They're also tightened down on this side. And we're gonna go ahead and put this little adapter thing in place. I'm going to reuse the spring clamp here. Shove this into place. And we're gonna hope for the best. And this may be something, we, we may replace this here soon, I don't know. We may just wait till it starts leaking. I don't think it looks like it's in too bad a shape. But anyway, here we go. And looks like we got it in place. We got it clamped. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this up here into the position that it needs to be in. And then we will install our other upper hose. Okay guys, the um, little thermostat thing here is in place. Here is our new upper hose. Uh, clamps right here. Our upper hose is already laying up here. Go ahead and throw him in place. Yeah, we're getting close to the end here. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this to where I can get to it easier. Get to the clamp easier anyway. So we're gonna, we're putting new worm clamps on here. Uh, the old spring deweys. Here we'll turn this and this away. And put that on there. And we'll get these tightened up. And we'll put this little bolt back in place right here. And we'll go ahead and hook this hose up. And then we'll move on. Okay, folks. Hose is in place. Everything's tightened up. We're going to go ahead and add antifreeze. This here is uh, full concentrate. We're going to go ahead and... Pour it on in the system, full gallon, and then we'll just add water. And it should get our, our mix about right. Okay, folks, we're gonna go ahead and pop our grill right back in. And this should just snap right back into place. And uh, then we'll, after that, we'll put our, there we go, that was pretty easy. Right down here, just a sec, we gotta get something going right down in here. Nope. That's not quite right. 
right there. That feels like it right there. Okay, guys, so the grill's in place. We're gonna go ahead and put in one, two, three, four, five, six little push clips. And oh, we forgot that one little air duct. We're gonna pop this right back off. We're gonna put that little air duct back in place and then we'll um, reattach this. Okay, guys, here's the little air duct that I was remembering. Glad I didn't get too much farther along. So pop the little pin in there. Pop the little pin in here and we're done. Now let's we'll snap that grill back in place. Okay. So there we go. Now we'll put them six little clips in there and be done. Okay, last piece to put in place is our little air duct here. Just gonna shove it in and uh, put it back in place. We have two 10 millimeter headed bolts here. About an inch and a half long to hold that down. Go ahead and get them started. And we will zip them down with the tool. The cordless impact. And what's it? I might have to move it. Oh, dude, yeah. you, ain't, you ain't done. <laughs> you ain't done with the water. I forgot I didn't have the little plug in there. Guys, this little plug here, actually, if I'd have stuck that in there, I could have pulled it right out of there and been fine. But anyway, just water. We just lost a little water. All right, folks. We're getting ready to crank this thing up and let it circulate and check it for leaks. So stay tuned. Okay, guys. Hey, we're going to just let this thing run until it circulates all the air bubbles out of the system and call this a day. We'll double check it for leaks. We're going to end this video here right now. I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out our video today on how to install a radiator in a 2009 Nissan Ultima. Like I say, I give it a, a difficulty level of about an 8 or so, you know, so depending on your skill level, uh, you might want to consider maybe getting a professional to uh, take care of this one for you. Just wanted to let you know that. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care.